Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker, play the opinion Potomac Watch podcast. That is, play the opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. I'm Paul Gigo here with Kate Batchelder, Odell, and Kim Strasso. And let's talk about this emerging tax deal that was announced this week by the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, Republican Jason Smith, and Ron Wyden, the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee. Kate, you've looked at this in some detail. What are the salient points of this deal and What's driving it? I thought these two parties couldn't agree on anything. Well, the Republican tax cuts from 2017 start to uh, expire, and a lot of them really expire at the end of 2025. So there are some minor provisions here that Republicans want extended, but there's small stuff there. For instance, the treatment of research and development expenses and deducted over five years or in one year, these kind of minor tax changes that businesses really want done few of those. And the trade for it with Democrats is really an expansion of the child tax credit in a way that's really just an income transfer program because it is focused on arcane changes that would send larger checks to people who have no tax liability at all. So it's a welfare trade for some of these business tax breaks is the way to think about it. I'm reminded of the old line from the CFTRS PGR work that um, sometimes the most frightening words in Washington are bipartisan consensus. And that may be true here. So it's about an $80 billion bill. There's not an official score yet from the Congressional Budget Office, but that seems to be the unofficial estimate of what the cost would be. Um, There are three main business subsidy provisions. As you said, it's the deduction for domestic research and development, bonus depreciation for equipment and technological investment, that sort of thing. That bonus depreciation was part of the 2017 bill. It started to phase out, and this would uh, restore a big chunk of it. And then the greater deduction for interest payments by business, which, of course, businesses love it because a lot of them take on debt. And the 2017 tax bill reduced the uh, deduction businesses could take. And so the corporate lobbies are pushing this. This strikes me as in part a repudiation of what they did in the uh, tax bill of 2017. Bonus depreciation, decent incentive, but hardly world shattering. And the deduction for R&D, well, I mean, that's a, it's been around for a long time favor some companies over others, I'd prefer to cut the corporate rate for all companies rather than have the specific provisions like this. But Kim, the child tax credit, the big favorite of Democrats, it was introduced, I think I first did my first column on it, opposing it in 1996 or seven, uh, when uh, Newt Gingrich agreed to it as part of the balanced budget deal with Bill Clinton. And I remember at the time I was writing a column in Washington and I wrote a column that said, Republicans are going to regret this because it's going to grow over time. And I got a phone call from Rahm Emanuel, who was in the White House, saying, you are so right. (laughs) We're going to drive this thing (laughs) a wedge. (laughs) And, you know, here we are 25 years later, and the Democrats expanded it to 3,600 in the pandemic. It's now back to 2,000, and it was scheduled to go back to 1,000. This deal would bring it back up to 2,000, I believe. So the Republicans will say, look, The trade-off, you got to do this if you want to get any kind of these business provisions extended in any way. What do you think of the trade? (laughs) Well, you know, I think it's kind of sad these days when Republicans now have to default to that. Essentially, what they're saying is we have to bribe Democrats to care about a good economy. (laughs) <laughs> um, again, we can debate we can debate the different provisions of these particular corporate tax changes and whether or not they are actually a boost to investment incentive or not. But essentially, that is what Republicans are saying is we've now totally given up on Democrats even caring about the economy. So now we have to give them terrible policy in return for sort of basic maintenance of good economic policy in Washington. But if you're going to do that, OK, if, if that is really what you've decided, this is terrible, terrible policy, which involves a bit of pandering, right? It's Republicans, because they're unwilling to look parents in the eye and say, we shouldn't go back to $3,600, but we'll keep it here. We'll extend it more. We're not going to take away this give you. This is the Republican Party engaging in its own vote buying in a way, linking arms with Democrats to do that, justifying it to themselves because they say it's good family policy, whatever have you. But I mean, the reality is that it's terrible policy, mostly for this reason, Paul. Under this bipartisan bill, 
they want to make this tax credit refundable, all 2,000 of it by 2025, meaning it will go to people who do not pay any tax liability at the moment. And in that regard, this is not tax relief for working families, as both parties would like to say. This is income redistribution. And it has a further issue in that it undermines any incentives to work in return for the credit. At least right now, the current credit, you have to have shown a small amount of income, just $2,500 if you want to claim it. But under this deal, the people who want to claim it would be able to rely on the prior year's income to trigger the credit and then get benefits for 2024 and 2025. So you only have to work a little tiny bit one year and you get benefits for two years. And that's essentially diluting the very work requirements that Republicans have been banging on about as part of the debt ceiling deal that was there and now part of the government funding fight that we're having. So on the one hand, they're saying we're not moving ahead with any government funding unless we fix work requirements. And here, we're now signing on to a bill that completely undermines those work requirements. It just goes to show it's bad policy and it ends up putting the Republicans in an awkward position, all because, again, there's a bit of pandering and horse trading going on here. Kate, the House Ways and Means Committee is going to write this bill up on Friday, I guess. Uh, No doubt it will pass when the chairman in Ways and Means wants to do something he gets his way. But what are the prospects uh, first on the House floor and then second in the Senate? Well, there is a sense of urgency to get it done before the end of the month so that it can take effect quickly and affect this year's tax filing season. I mean, some of these provisions are retroactive to 2023. So it's in part and, you know, a SOP to companies that have already made decisions for last year. So that is part of the urgency of getting it through. I think it does have a real shot, but they're losing votes on both sides for different reasons. So there is a constituency on the right that likes these refundable tax credits and thinks they're a political winner for Republicans. And so that is driving some of this ability to trade these work requirements and stuff away. But on the other hand, you have Democrats who are saying that they didn't get enough on the tax credit. I mean, they wanted it to be $3,600 for you to have no earnings to claim it and to send it in monthly checks. So that's kind of what they want. And some of them think they have a better chance of getting it if they hold out and don't do a deal now. So they're losing some Democrats on that. And I don't know if there are enough Republicans who subscribe to that ideology that Republicans should be in the business of writing larger checks to families to pass the bill. And I also think the median Republican in the conference, once they get a closer look at this and start thinking about what it means, if you let somebody just say, well, I worked last year, so I get a benefit, I think there was going to be real pause on that. And you're seeing a little in the Senate already. It wasn't welcomed with open arms in the Senate. So I think It's got an uphill battle to get through both chambers at this point. From my point of view, let's hope that is the case. All right. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Kim. Thank you all for listening. We will be on the presidential race bandwagon here right through New Hampshire and beyond. So please check us out every day. Thanks for listening.